Hi guys, welcome to the workshop. This is uh, the stepdad's work area. That's the old motor I was talking about. It was an old Hoover Mark IV A motor. With a buffer wheel on it. Chop saw. Bench grinder. Drill press. Angle grinder. Makita. Fret saw. Table saw. And a rotor table. And the motorbike hiding under the cover. You've got, got a friggin' clue what this is. Hmm. I think I'm going to stick an extra set of sockets up here. Not today though. But I'll just save unplugging. Flurry light. Another fluorescent light. It was originally four or five light points. There was one there with the switch built into the light unit. But uh, I took that down and just put a connector block on the end and taped it up for safety. And there was that one that was, because this was a static home at one point. That was one of the lounge lights and so was that one. They were on two separate switches. So I just wired one, this fluorescent, to one light point and then ran a cable to the second one. That five foot one is on a separate switch. And that one is wired off the um, light position that was in the bedroom there. The original bedroom light for this little one is still there. But I'll move the switches as well. This one does that one. And it was, you can see where the partitions went. So obviously that switch was actually there. It was a pull cord switch. So I just put one of those up to keep the connection safe and I did it there as well. And just ran the switch down, and these two do those ones. And then the kitchen area was down here, and that's where a light was again with its built in switch. So I just extended the cable through to run the lights in here. And uh, yes, that is a light bulb sticking through it. Because we haven't got a tube for the light yet, and I was fed up with that end being dark. That's actually an un Let's zoom out, that might be a good idea. That's actually an old under cabinet fluorescent light. That's the junction box. Just ran it down to the switch. Here's outside. The neighbour's caravan. Got a lot of traffic on this lane today because there's a tree come down on the main road and it's blocking it so all traffic's being diverted down here. There's the trailer my stepdad put together. It was an old tent trailer. There was two greenhouses there. One's been taken down. And if you look just through there, that's where the other one is. I'll go over there in a minute. There's the pump house for the borehole, and I think the filters are in there. A few bike parts, bike frame down there. It's more or less a parts bike, that one. It's a shame, it's a decent frame. Another one down there, which is more or less parts. There's 
stepdad's bike, brother's bike. And of course, whoops, I just tripped over a bucket. And of course, my three bikes. Finally got them done. I just need a polish and a clean down. I don't know if I'm going to take any home today or not. Tempted to take at least one home. But yeah, there's the Apollo. I think the tyre needs to be seated on that rim a bit better. Take these bar ends off because they're manky. Well, that's the um, purple one I've been on about. Needs a clean. Wheels need a clean and whatnot. And then that's good to go. There's the blue rally. There's a black saw. Well, actually, I'm going to use that as a future project, but I've used it for parts for the time being. But yeah, it will be a future project bike. It's the socket set I got. Well, half a socket set. Hilka. There's a lot of them there. I could probably find the rest in there if I wanted to be asked to look, but I sorted all this out and as soon as I picked it up, guess what happened? <laughs> a bit of a pointless exercise really, but never mind. Um, yeah, so this is the state of the shop. It's sort of my end, if you like. That mm, I might shunt that down that end yet, I don't know. And that filing cabinet may be going down the other end as well. I've got all that crap in there to sort out. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to put a tube in that light down the end there or not, because we don't really need it. Not at the moment. I'll do most of the work in here. But yeah. That's where the bathroom was. <laughs> There's the radio, which I'm finding it to be a pain in the fucking ass to get a signal on. I'll find something better. It's old. It's probably not helping it either, being so old now. There's the old electric meter and fuse box for anyone interested. <laughs> Coin meter, one pound. Fuses, rewirable fuses for the fuse box. He wants me to put that on the switch as well so he can just sort of switch it on and off on the wall or something. Instead of uh, reaching underneath to turn it on. Because he he's either got that or the switch on the actual um, tool. And yeah. That's just there for decoration now. There's nothing in it. Anyway, I said I'd take the camera out. I didn't do it yesterday. Like I wanted to. Anyway, I'm just going to turn the camera off and make my way to the garden while I've got some peace. I've come out on the decking. I'll just show you the uh, car in the driveway before I come out on here. You get a bulb to put in that. Oh, wait, I think we're changing it for that one. And it's been tidied up. Yeah, this decking needs a good old clean. All hand built by my stepdad. Cool. Over a year ago now. And there's the pond. Become pretty well established now. There's the filter box. Decorative pump. <laughs> Quite a few garden ornaments. Be 
third box he built. It's still a garden. Fence is in need of some repair. Oh dear. There's a goldfish in here somewhere, but I can't see him. Or can I? I think. I don't think you're going to see it because of all the light reflection, but he's down there somewhere. Plant up the corner there, start to grow again for spring and summer. Trying to start to flower there. Pretty clear the water, isn't it? A lot of crap in the bottom from the trees. It's the waterfall. Big gnome. <laughs> oh, turned the wrong way. Just a greenhouse and veggie patch. And over there is the landlord's car. And we keep walking around that corner and we'll get to his house. It's right, literally next door to this one. I'll get the zoom right in a minute. Mum's house, then you've got landlord's house. All semi detached. Wooden garden shed. Lord Mower, not much in the garden really. Dog's ball. Should be another couple docked around somewhere. There's my Ellswick. Might pump the tyres up on that actually and go for a spin. Hasn't had the tyres pumped up since. Uh, Christmas. Well, I know the front one at least has got a slow puncture. Bench, very small bench. My stepdad built that as well. That frame is scrap. So I should watch the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think he's got anything planted in here yet. He's got the bu buckets to transfer the tomato plants into. That's all we've got lying around, so they're not being used for anything. I've got holes in anyway because they were used as planters. If they're the ones I'm thinking of. Yeah, holes in the bottom of each one. See that one right in the middle. Oops. Outdoor electrics down there for the garden. They were already here on a shed. This when they first moved in, the shed was up this corner. So I just made use of it. It's all on a MCB, RCD I should say. And I've got the outside light plugged into it. <laughs> yeah, it's all working. Why don't you go with me? This is the greenhouse the landlord let him have was uh, beside that one. In these veggie patch we've got potatoes, carrots and beans. I think that's all he's got in so far. Anyway, I'm going to disappear and I will uh, talk to you all when I get home. Okay. I'm back home. A bit more organised this time. I've already signed into the uh, PC. I've got myself a drink. 
I haven't fed Nemo yet, but he's still got a little bit to chew on in there if he is hungry. Uh, so, that was the workshop. And garden. I thought I'd do the garden while I was there. So, you can actually see what I've been talking about. <laughs> right. I'm just waiting for the hard drive activity light to stop. I don't know why. You know, I could click on the browser now and it will open, but for some reason I've always waited for the um, hard drive activity light to stop. And if I just go ahead and click on the browser like that, it'll open. I guess that comes from um, using older computers where, uh, especially like Windows XP, I always had to wait for the hard drive light to stop flashing, otherwise it would take forever to open up a browser, but I don't have to with this one. Righty-ho. Well, I'm not going to Mum's tomorrow, so I've got the day here to myself. Um... So that means I'm going to finish off that black bike I've got out front. I've just got to put a um, bolt, a lock bolt on top of the um, forks. I haven't refitted the handlebars tightly because of that. So I won't pull them off to get the uh, lock nut on. Because I didn't have one when I was fitting the new forks at Mum's. So what message? Who's messaged me? Oh, friend from India. Um, and just set the brakes up, that's it. Oh, I've got to change the tyres as well, I mustn't forget that, it's got bald tyres on it. But I did bring, I was actually looking around for them and I've just realised they're actually in the shed. I, <laughs> I did bring four tyres home anyway, so actually I bought them home like three nights ago, I think. So I've got the tyres, I've just got to fit them. This suspension bike, I may end up selling just because I've got my eye on a Lego set and I want some cash for it. Then again, once I get out to Cat's Custom Trikes and take these two bikes and wheels out to her, I'll near enough have the cash there to get the set with anyway, so... And I want to do that this week. <clears throat> I don't know when. Because as I don't drive, it relies on my taxi service. <laughs> I sometimes I... I have times where I wish I did drive, because it would make life easier, you know? If I like what to go and see friends, I can just jump in a car and go without having to rely on anyone. But, having watched Mum sort things out like car insurance, it seems like such a friggin' arsake to get car insurance. And, uh, so many car insurers she's been with, and they've just been tossers, basically. It's like they don't care about you, they just want your money. <clears throat> Um, Quick Fit wasn't the last one she was with, it was the one before, it's the one she was with with the Pajero pin in, I believe. They wouldn't transfer the inch, um, no, they started off with Quick Fit on the Avensis, and, uh, They were just, they weren't even a week late with a payment. They were just literally a matter of days, two or three days late with a payment. And Quick Fit cancelled it and then wanted them to uh, pay the full fees yet again and take out a new claim. And I thought, yeah, that's why them bastards cancelled it because I get more money out of you doing that. So uh, they got told to stick it, basically. Politely, they got told to stick it, but. I don't think I'd have been as polite on the phone as Mum was. Jeez. 
then you've got tax to sort out, then you've got MOT once a year to sort out, which could be costly depending on what the car needs. Although having said that, if people looked after their cars and actually had problems fixed, when they noticed them, it would probably be a lot cheaper because if uh, there's a lot of things with a car that if you leave them, they will just get worse and worse and worse and it will cost more to fix when you do finally get it fixed, such as um, a brake pads. If you don't do your brake pads soon enough and you wear them down to just the bare metal plates that the pads are uh, stuck to, so you end up with metal pads on metal disc, you can actually fuck up your brake disc as well and that's going to cost extra to fix. Extra that you could have ordered if you just had the brake pads done in the first place. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if it is money cash flow problems that people avoid it or naivety maybe you know they don't realize that it's that serious I don't know because my sister was a good one for that she actually completely knackered a brake disc because she didn't get her brake pads done even though we kept telling her but, uh, you know, some people you just can't help. You could tell them and tell them and tell them I need to get something done. I'll keep putting it off, putting it off, not worrying about it, and then uh, whinge because they've got to pay out a heck of a lot more money than they would have if they fixed it when they were told. Anyway, that's, that is my sister to a T, that is. <laughs> Bless her. But, uh, I am the sort, I won't get, you know, I'm not the sort to get pissy if someone don't listen to me. I'm like, well... You didn't listen to me, that's your fault. <laughs> I did tell you. I am the sort of asshole that would just turn around and go, I told you so. And then sit there and laugh. <laughs> oh. um, a late apology for any wind noise. We did have um, Storm Katie hit Britain today. And that closed the road, main road that goes past Mum's. Not the road she's on, there's a road across the field. Um, why are you trying to fucking do, cat? <laughs> you missed me that much? Is it because I've been away for the last four days? Well, going to and from home for the last four days. It's only like I'm gone in the afternoons, well, till about... What is the time? 8.35. And my clock on the wall up there still says 7.35. <laughs> I haven't put that one forwards yet. <sighs> oh, I was just looking at my Technic digger. Look at this. I can't remember if I should... No, I didn't show this. So, uh, leaving the switches in, um, in the reverse as I normally leave them didn't work either. <laughs> the backhoe has still dropped, but the front one hasn't. Now, I would have thought... If it sunk with weight, the front ones would have, or well, the front loader arm would have sunk as well. Maybe I've got a weak cylinder. Uh, maybe there's a little air leak there. Like I said, it's not important. It still works. But yeah, I am watching the um, original 1989 set on eBay. I'm gonna pay my seven pound something fees Thursday as well. Sometimes I just like to sit here when I'm bored and just browse eBay, see what I can find. You know, it's like walking into your favourite store without leaving the comfort of your own home. But I actually have to say, over the recent years, I much prefer to be a buyer than a seller. No, in my watch list, some look at them indicators for a book. No reflectors for a bike. I don't know why I'm watching them. But there's this one for £55. Instructions, but no box. Uh, and I did see a few in suggestions when I was at Mum's. But I really do want the original set. Yeah, the exhaust there doubles up as the uh, air pump. 
we've got anything in suggestions here yes we have we've got one there 54 pounds buy it now free postage one here for 40 pounds but extortionate postage but that could be because it's boxed um, so it might be that they're gonna you know really pad up the box to protect it so depending on their feedback I might go for that if I could find it cheaper I would two days left and I can't bid on it because I haven't got my fucking fees <laughs> uh, well I suppose I could do it the other way and ask mum to bid on it um, let's just have a read. Vintage Lego Digger 8862 in good condition except for two broken pieces as you can see in the pick. Got that. Got that. I can replace those. That wouldn't be a problem. Missing part. One pneumatic cylinder. Part number. Uh, if that's the pneumatic cylinder I think it is, I do actually have a spare one. Um, title, backhoe grader, set number 862, year 1989. Comes with instruction manual, bit tatty, sorry, no box. Oh, um, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong one. I thought I was still looking at the 40 quid one. Dumbass. Mm, in that case, 55 quid is a bit much. One times 16 length. Yeah, I've just added a few bits that will hold these together and it really does not look out of place when fully built. You can see this in the picks too. Just one piece missing, which is one single black angle. I've searched high and low for it, but no joy. Comes with original box and instructions. UK delivery only, thanks. If only I had the flipping cash that I could stick into my uh, bank and just pay my fees. So I could bid on that for Thursday. That would be awesome. There's one for 39.15. That's probably the cheapest I've found. But going by the photos, I'm going to guess that there's... Oh, it may have the instructions, but no box. I'm not too fussed about the box, to be honest. Box... Not an issue. Now, this set was released in 1989, yeah, 27 years ago, and was the was at the time Lego's Technic flagship model. It consists of 671 pieces, and fully extended, it is 65 centimeter long, 16 centimeter wide, and 22 centimeter high. Three pneumatic valves control the rear arm. 100% complete with an original instruction book, but no box. This set is in ex excellent condition, especially considering its age. The instruction book is complete and in good condition, with signs of wear. Please see photo. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't expect an instruction book that's some um, 27 years old to be in top mint condition. All pictures shown are of the actual item on sale. Built only a couple of times, never played with and never displayed. Item has now been dismantled, fully cleaned and bagged in zip seal bags. It will be shipped in a sealed cardboard box. Any questions, please ask. Many more LEGO sets to come, including Star Wars, Technic, City and some really good combinations of set. Hmm. Add to watch list. Because that's bids and there's five days left. And this is actually the cheap. I know £39.50 is a weird start bid, but what's his feedback? 100% positive feedback and a low score though, 25 score. See? But 100% is good. I'm actually going to have a little look. I like to have a look at feedback. And this is all, all down to here. They're coming up on camera, yeah. It's all in the past month. And then the rest is more than a year ago, so... I'm guessing he doesn't use eBay often. I've got a cat getting in the way of the bloody mouse now. View his items for sale. Has he got anything else? Oh, he has. Ooh. 
I knew I had the cash, I'd have got that from him as well, and that. Those are two sets I would actually love. Oh, sorry Nemo. The shuttle launching crew. And the escort vehicles. Yay! Actually, you know what? I'm going to add it to watch list. Why not? Because you never know what's going to happen. Yet. I've got that one. A good town, Octan, sail and fly marina, near mint, hard to find. 50 quid. And 49.50. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Would love that sort of set as well. Anyway, moving on. My plans for tomorrow is to get that other bike finished. It shouldn't take me too long to finish it. Um, weather permitting, I'll do that outside. If weather is shit, then I'll have to do it indoors. And then I want to get started on this suspension bike so I can decide what to do with it. I think till I've decided, I'm just going to use the original gear shifters. It's the easiest option. I've got my toolbox here. All cables are going to have to be replaced anyway. Fucking lid. Usually when the lid does that, these pop open as well and I have a lovely mess to clean up. But uh, what I normally do when I'm replacing all cables anyway, I may not have to do the front, I might get away with it. I'll do this. One, two, there should be one more, the front gear, no that's for the rear brake, I've just got a brand new one to stick on that as well, there we go, ow, just demolished half the hospital, that's all I do, and I can remove the cables. could actually, if I really want to, reuse the outer, but that's that horrible, stiff, thin stuff, and I fucking hate that stuff anyway. At least you know when you get a bike from me, your cables won't seize up. Oh, that was actually in there quite stiff. Here we go, that one. Might as well do something while I'm sitting here. Picking them. That's why I like these shifters, look at that, yes. <laughs> so easy to get the cables off on this one. Is that one in the right place, or have I got to... Nope, I've got to move it, I think. Yeah, it's got to be down there. Oh, I think. Hello? I'll have to get in there with two hands and have a poke. Right, I'm going to take a stupid reflector bracket off. This one's worth me. I don't know whether to uh, redo that chain or not. Might get away with it with a good oil. Yeah, I think there's some new cables on here. Get away with the brake blocks, they're fine. Brake noodles, I'll take some steel wool to the brake noodles and just clean those up. All the parts I'm going to reuse can go up there. Yeah, I'll just brush over that with some steel wool so it doesn't look as dirty. Da -da -da. Some more of this fucking... I don't know why they use two different sizes. Well, factory built bikes like this do. They use two different sizes of cable out. I don't. But I actually know a lot of people that I watch online. RJ the bike guy, he uses the same size cable out for his gear cables as he does for the brake cables. So much easier and less risk of your gear cables fucking seizing up. <laughs> That's why I do it. <clears throat> Plus a bit of oil down it helps as well. 
it's what I did um, on one of the ladies' bikes at Mum's, the Silver Apollo, earlier in the vid. Just uh, the rear brake was stiff to pull. It worked, but it was rather stiff, so I just disconnected the brake cable, uh, pulled the outer off the frame along with the cable, pulled the brake cable out of its outer, got some three in one spray oil that my stepdad bought the other day, and just squirted some of that down there, and then re threaded the brake cable after trimming the end off. And uh, Works a treat. It's <laughs> all it takes. Just a, a little general service like that, and your bike will last ages. It's not hard. Looks hard, but not hard. May, well, it doesn't. Maybe it's just me because I'm used to it, but to me, it's not hard. Fuck. I put a bike seat in the back of Mum's car to put on said bike here. Guess where I left it? <laughs> but Mum should be coming up town tomorrow anyway, so if I want it, I can pick it up then. Although I've got another one down here that I could use anyway that might be in better condition, so I don't know. I'm going to have to have a look. But, uh, yeah. I don't want to sort the brakes out yet because I've got to drop the wheels off to put, um, or to check the tubes and definitely replace the front. Oh, just drop that cable I was playing with. And definitely replace the um, front tyre. Line up the um, grip shift there as well because if you look at that one, it's actually lower along with the brake lever than the ones this side. I don't know if you can see that. If I Put the camera like that, can you can just about see the difference? So I'll rearrange those as well. Are they loose? Any of them loose? No. Hmm. Maybe it got knocked and they got twisted round. I don't know. Cut this flappy bit off, I think. I'll just tidy it up. Having that cut off is going to look better than that flapping around like that, isn't it? That's the way I see it anyway. But, uh, yeah. Still in two minds though. Do I just use those shifters in case I do sell it? Or do I chuck these on? I suppose before I chuck these on, I should see if those cables are long enough. I've got a feeling this one will be. It's the rear one. Because the cables on different bikes, one they're rooted differently on the frame. And two, you get different frame lengths as well, which means you get different lengths of these. But uh, I'll just line them up because they are nicer grip shifts. And if I do keep this, I'm going to want some nicer ones on it than that. I think I will, at least for now. You know, I'm getting a bit bored riding the uh, front suspension bike. Anyway. We'll call it it for this video and get it up onto the PC and uh, put together and uploaded all tonight. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And uh, I'll talk to you again very soon, I hope. Bye.